Welcome to Par Podcast, episode 76.32. Par Podcast is an audio supplement for Public Administration Review, the premier professional journal in the field of public administration. This year, 2015, Par celebrates 75 years of furthering public administration research, theory, and practice. This episode features comments by Roderick Rhodes, a professor of government at the University of Southampton in the United Kingdom. Professor Rose discusses his article titled, Recovering the Craft of Public Administration. This article is currently available on Early View and we published in Public Administration Review, Issue 76, Volume 3. Many Western countries have been reforming their public sectors for two and three decades, and we've now had several waves of reform. The first wave of reform we refer to as the new public management but that's a label which has become increasingly opaque over the years and can refer to at least three things. It can refer to the introduction of managerialism into bureaucracies and the widespread use of performance measurement. Alternatively, it can also refer to marketisation, which is the contracting out of services and the privatisation of industries previously owned by the government. And more recently, it's come to refer to customer-oriented delivery of services. Along with that, we've also had the growth of the new public management. And here the emphasis lies on managing networks. And we've had a shift uh, in the little phrases that people like to sell these changes from government to governments, or if you prefer, from rowing to steering. The idea is that we've got to put together packages of organisations in order to deliver services. Now then, in this context, the public servant has got different roles. They've got to create a policy narrative that brings all the different actors together. They've got to work across the boundaries of organisations to pull the organisations together. They've got to be collaborative leaders uh, who uh, persuade other people to work with them in delivering particular policy objectives. But in all of these changes, whether we're talking about the new public management or the new public governments, what we've succeeded in doing more often than not is creating the public service reform syndrome. And what I mean by this expression is that initiatives come and go, they overlap and ignore one another, they leave behind residues of varying size and style. Uh, The brutally simple point is many of the reforms do not fit in the public sector. And they don't fit for many good reasons. They don't fit because of bureaucratic games. They don't fit, for example, in the UK and other Westminster style systems because there are strong two-party adversarial uh, systems and the party political games dominate all. They don't fit because of the demands of political accountability. What might seem to uh, a manager to be a relatively trivial problem of implementation can come back and bite a senior politician because it affects particular vulnerable client groups. And of course, there is always the media spotlight. We live in the 24-7 world now where even the most trivial problems are picked up and highlighted by the media. So I think we need to revisit the old craft of public administration. We need to ask the question, what can we learn from traditional public administration? And I suggest that the old craft skills, which focus much more on managing the minister's political environment than they do on service delivery, are of continuing importance today. Now, of course, the first step is to decide what is a craft. Now, to call something a craft is to accept that uh, it's not necessarily a scientific approach. Uh, What we're talking about here is practical knowledge. It's not been systematised. It's been learnt on the job. Uh, It's certainly complex. It's often tacit and frequently in the public sector, it's secret. Now, those are skills which uh, we know uh, very little about. I scanned the literature for the article that I wrote and it's really bits and pieces here and there. But I pulled the list together. And the list covers the following uh, seven items. And without even pretending that this is a definitive list, I think it's a good starting list just to ask the question, what is the traditional art of public administration? First of all, there's counselling. Well, the shorthand expression that people like is telling truth to power. Secondly, there's stewardship, which is the art of being here tomorrow. Thirdly, there's prudence, or just taking care. There's probity, being honest. There's exercising judgment, maybe a nebulous quality, but we, I think we all know that the really good leaders have this capacity. It's also about being diplomatic, about seeing the world through other people's eyes, of sitting where the other person is sat. 
then finally there's political nafs and I'd like to unpack this one just in a little more detail to illustrate the kind of thing that I'm talking about. Political nafs refers to astuteness in understanding and negotiating the political lay of the land. And when I was interviewing uh, the public servants, uh, it was quite clear that they often had very good political antenna. And a number of them expressed frustration when they found that their politicians were less skillful than they were. As they said, you develop a feel for the political and you get frustrated when you see how people who've had a lifetime of, in politics make such a mess of the politics. And the little story they love to tell you is they're walking along with their politician and there's a hole in the pavement. And they say to the politician, watch out, there's a hole there, uh, don't fall into it. And the minister falls into the hole. So the, the public servant immediately helps the minister out of the hole and they walk on and the public servant pretends that he never fell into that hole. Now those are the kinds of qualities and skills that I mean when we're talking about political maps. Now politics here, please, does not refer to party politics. It refers to the politics of public administration, to politics within the executive of government to relationships to, to Parliament and Congress and to relationships to the media. I mean, every politician and every senior administrator must actually ask the question, what will this look like on the front pages of the Daily Star? And their art is the art of coping. The aim is survival. The aim is to still be here tomorrow. And those skills seem to me to be of continuing relevance. Now, it's not a question of traditional skills versus the skills of the new public management or versus the skills of the new public governance. I don't I, I agree we need all of these uh, qualities, but we need to strike a better balance between the old and the new. It's a question of what works, of which skills fit in a particular context. The pendulum has swung too far for too long towards the new and the fashionable. It needs to swing back towards bureaucracy and the traditional skills of bureaucrats as part of the repertoire of government. And let me repeat, it's part of the repertoire of governing. The traditional craft skills are not the be-all and end-all. They're not the new solution. They're not the new trend. The plea is simply that they are of continuing relevance. This concludes Par Podcast, episode 76.32. To listen to additional episodes and learn more about Public Administration Review, please visit us online at publicadministrationreview.org. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at PA Review. Thanks for listening.